This simple technique can completely transform your animation and most people don't even know about it. And that technique is layer styles and we're going to use them to take our animation from this to this. But before we dive right into After Effects, I want to talk about some pre-production steps. Because if we just jump in and start adding layer styles in a wild frenzy, we could spend hours adding, removing and tweaking before we get something we like. So best practice is to start by designing a style frame and to get some quality references to inform that style frame. But if you're anything like me, you've been in a toxic relationship with references. When I was trying and struggling to get better, I used to think that I shouldn't need references. Using references was cheating, I should be good enough to create my own styles and awesome shapes without any source material, and I thought that pros didn't use references. Well, that was all bullshit, and if you think the same way, I'm here to be your motion design therapist to help you resolve your deep-seated issues with references. And in fact, when I started using references for everything I did, my work started improving faster and I was less frustrated with the process. So there's a massive tip for you before we've even gotten to the meat of the tutorial. Uh, phrasing. So here are a few references I found that had some of the features I was looking for. I wanted something that felt a bit more 3D with gradients and a shinier, almost bubble-like feel. But definitely not a bubble because the character was animated to feel more like rubber and that's an important consideration. So here is the original, and to drop in a shameless plug, the animation is actually something I created when testing out my program, the Motion Practice Quest, but more on that later. For the new version, I decided to go with a dark blue background, I rounded the stroke of the character, and added some radial gradients to the floor. I added a gradient to the stroke and changed the two colors to a slightly less saturated orange and purple because the original colors weren't working for me on the darker background. I also wanted to create a reference for the lighting of the character, so I decided to play around with the 3D functionality that Illustrator has recently added. So with a duplicate of the character U-shape, I went up to Effect, 3D and Materials, and dropped in an Inflate effect. I then bumped up the metallic and roughness settings to get something that feels a bit more like rubber. Then in the Lighting tab, I changed the rotation of the light and I dropped the ambient light intensity so that it wasn't washing out the shadow so much. I added a similar effect to the bottom circle. Now we're gonna get inside After Effects to finish off this style frame. Praising! Boom! I've gone ahead and set this up already, so for starters, let's duplicate our main shape twice and hide these for now. Now on our main shape, you'll see we have a gradient applied already, however, it's being applied across the whole layer and I would prefer if it was applied along the path of the shape. This may be fine in most cases, but deciding not to settle for mediocrity allows us to learn a bit more about layer styles. So let's start by right-clicking our layer, going to Layer Styles, and dropping in a Gradient Overlay. Now let's twirl down to Layer Styles and open up our Gradient Overlay options. Firstly, we're going to change the style to Angle, and if we adjust the angle, you'll see something kinda weird. To show you what's happening a bit better, here is a circle and I'm going to apply the same gradient overlay and change it to angle. Now you can get a better sense of what's going on and what changing the angle does. And you can do some pretty cool stuff animating this as well. Have a look at this professional animation, for example. Getting back to our shape, let's change the angle to zero, edit our gradient by bringing the black side in about halfway so that when we offset the Y value of our gradient like this, our gradient looks like it's being applied across the path of the stroke. And this is what that would look like on our circle in case you're a bit confused. Now we just need to change our colors and we have what we're looking for. Now there is a downside to this technique. So you'll see if I move the layer, the gradient moves as well, which is great. But if we rotate it, the gradient does not follow that movement, which is not so great. And yes, I'm aware that there are better ways to do this. They don't have this problem, but damn it, this is a tutorial about layer styles and we're gonna do everything using layer styles, so get over it. Moving on, let's also add the layer style bevel and emboss, and in the settings, let's drop the highlight opacity to zero, increase the size to 80, and change the angle to zero. Now let's change the shadow color to our original purple and a quick little illustration trick here, if you change your shadow hue to something slightly different to your base color, you often get a much more interesting and dynamic result. Now let's bring our second duplicate back on, right click and add the layer style in a glow. Let's change the color to something like this, change the size to about 145, the source to center, the range to about 30 and the blend mode to overlay. Now let's twirl down the blending options above the inner glow and twirl down advanced blending. Let's solo this layer and now if we change our full opacity to zero, you'll see that we've removed everything except for the layer style. We can now unsolo and we can also nudge it down and right slightly to align with our reference and light source. 
Now let's unhide our third duplicate and once again we're going to add the layer style, bevel and emboss. Then let's drop our shadow opacity to zero because we're going to create a highlight. Let's increase our size to 80 and increase our angle to a point where the highlight looks like it's opposite the shadow. Just over 300 or so should be fine. Now if we increase the altitude, we start to get a bit closer to what we're looking for. It can also be helpful to play around with the ratio between the depth and the altitude, so if the altitude is a bit lower, when we increase the depth, there is a bit more blur. Now we need to go into advanced blending again and reduce the fill opacity to zero. And then for the right aesthetic, let's change the highlight blending mode to soft light and increase the opacity to 100. Now one thing I don't like is that the highlight is going a bit too high on the right side to be realistic and fit in with the lighting we're referencing. So a quick fix is to just delete our top right path point. And I just want to show you a really awesome component of the bevel and emboss layer style. So if we solo our highlight and start rotating it, you'll see that the highlight maintains the correct lighting direction. And this works for the shadow as well, and many of the other layer styles work in the same way. How dope is that? Moving on to our circle, let's just copy and paste our highlights layer style onto it with Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And then in the advanced blending options, we need to bring our full opacity back up to 100. Now in the bevel and emboss options, let's bring the shadow opacity back up to 80 and then let's apply the same shadow technique from before, starting by changing the shadow to our base purple and let's make it a lot darker this time. Now we just need to drag our color picker over a bit to adjust the hue and that looks much better. Finally, I think it'll be awesome if the bottom circle felt a bit more reflective and metallic. So a nice way to do that is to make it look like the light is bouncing off the shape above and landing on the bottom circle. So to achieve that, we can add a gradient overlay and then edit the gradient colors to match the shape above using the same orange and purple. Now we can just change the Y offset to move the gradient up to get what we're after. Quick and easy. And that's our style frame done. And I think you know what time it is. We've reached the point where I usually ask something of you if you've gotten any value from this video. And I often like to apply a joke that fits in with the theme of my previous jokes, which in this case was phrasing. So go ahead and smash that like button. You dirty, dirty dog. And we can move on to applying our style to our animation. So here is our animated comp. And here it is with an updated background color and floor gradients. And now we can start adding our styling. The way I ended up animating this required me to separate the main shape into four different layers, all labeled in pink. To add our styling, let's start by duplicating this first character layer twice. Now in our previous comp, we can select our pink layers and search for layer to open up our layer styles. Now let's select and copy the first shape's layer styles with Ctrl C and then paste it onto the first layer in our new comp with Ctrl V. Let's repeat this with the next two layers. And voila, we have magically styled our character shape. The same process would then be repeated for the other pink layers. We can also repeat this process with the ball, so let's copy and paste the layer styles the same way, like this. And now we just need to animate the offset of the gradient overlay so that it comes on when the main shape lands on it and disappears when the main shape falls off, like this. And this is the final animation with a few extra bits and bobs added for visual appeal. I hope you've seen how valuable layer styles can be and can start experimenting with them yourself because they have so much to offer. If you're interested in the project files for this full animation, it's available as part of the Motion Practice Quest, which is kind of like a motion design workout plan designed to increase your skills and confidence by making practicing easier and more effective. So check it out below. And of course, subscribe for more Motion XP.